Welcome to Repurpose My Way. Today I have primitive thrift flips, dump find up cycles, and warm interior decor. I thrifted this mirror and shelf combo from Goodwill recently. Didn't realize I had paid six whole dollars for this guy, but hopefully I got him at a discount. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave the birds on there or not, but I think I'm not going to. So this shelf originally had a little, some little brackets or whatever in the front and they were gone when I, when I got it. So I want to fill in these holes. So I added a little glue in the hole and now I'm adding some air dry clay. That's going to fill in those holes pretty good and I'll be able to paint right over that. So I'm going to use some burgundy clay paint that I have and I'm going to paint this with two coats all over the shelf and mirror. Now this paint does cover the mirror really well uh, with the two coats but if you wanted to get a really really good coverage because you weren't going to put anything over the front then you probably would want to spray it with some flat clear sealer to keep it from the shininess will keep it from uh, sticking really well so uh, I did not do that because I'm going to be doing a technique over the front of it. So I wasn't really worried about it not covering super great. It really did a good job, uh, but it really would have needed a third coat if I was not going to do something over the front of the mirror. So I'm just taping off the edges because I am going to be doing a crackle finish over just the mirrored section. I'm going to be using some old school uh, school glue nothing fancy. I have used Mod Podge before, but I find that the school glue works the best. I'm not sure what the the big difference is that makes it work better for me, but I really like using the school glue. This glue was old and down in my craft room for a really long time, so it was kind of separated and watery, so I had to shake it up, actually warm it up because it's pretty cold down there. I had to shake it up uh, and let it sit for a while and it actually worked really well. So I just did a thin coat all over the glass area of the shelf and now I'm taking some of my repurpose white uh, paint. It's not chalk paint, it's just regular paint that I get from Tractor Supply. This is an ivory, not a white actually. And I'm just going over with a fairly thick coat because I'm only doing one coat over this. Uh, you don't want to overwork the glue and the paint together. You just want to get a nice coat over it. And then I'm using my heat gun to speed up the crackling process. This works so well. I haven't done this in a really long time and I'm glad I did it because I like the look on this shelf. <music> my crow stencil that I created and had made. Uh, you can find these to purchase in a link to my Etsy shop down in the description and pinned to the comments down below. And so I'm just going to use this. You can use it either way facing either direction. And I just flipped it over and taped it down. It just makes it a little easier to work with. If I tape it, I don't get any shifting or movement usually. Uh, and I'm just taking some black chalk paint and going over it just tamping it on with an old uh, small paintbrush and giving it a nice coat it's not going to get a super great coverage because I want it to look distressed so I did not do it a heavy heavy coverage here it looks like it but you actually can see the ivory through it so now I'm just taking a small brush and touching up the tip of the tail and the tip of the beak and getting a because there was a an edge there from the mirror to the to the frame, uh, I couldn't quite get a very good crisp look. So I just went and did it afterwards, 
And now I'm just sanding down the edges, making this look distressed. Of course, if you don't want to, if you want to do something like this and didn't want the distressing, you don't like it or whatnot, you can not distress it. You can leave it just the way it is. But I like things distressed and aged, things that look like they've been around a while. Now you probably can tell there is some black splotches all around the little crow on the ivory part. I didn't get that filmed. I thought I was filming and I was not, but I just took a brush with a little bit of black paint. I taped around the edges of the frame so that I wouldn't get any black splatters on that. And I just splattered black splotches all over around the crow just to give it some dimension, just a different uh, thing to look at when you're looking at the crow. So now I'm taking some antique wax after I have spray sealed this with my clear Rust-Oleum spray and let it dry. I'm going to take the antique wax and go around the edges of the mirror and just do a little swirling around the edges with the wax. I put it on the brush and then wipe a lot of it off and that just helps me keep it from getting too muddy or dirty looking. And so then I just take a paper towel and I'm wiping it back, kind of uh, fanning it in towards the inside of the mirror to give it a uh, distressed look going into the mirror. And now I'm just using a little of the antique wax on my bird. I did distress him just a little bit as well. I'm just taking this and, and just, I like the black, the antique on the black paint. So I did that and then just kind of wiped it back a little bit. And I think this looks really good with this black and tan tie here and a little rusty star. And I think this came out really, really cute. I love the shape and size of this cute little box from Goodwill. I paid a couple dollars for it and it is just adorable. I wanted to do something a little different with it. So I decided to uh, sand off the top just a little. The paint on there was kind of sticking up and I wanted to paint this piece and not put anything on the top. So I didn't want it to show through the paint. So after I sanded that down so that you wouldn't be able to see it through the paint, I painted over it with some of my burgundy chalk paint that I have. And I uh, really love the hinges on the top of this box. I did paint over them, but I am going to go back through and uh, highlight those again with some black. I was going to sand it down, but... I think that just paint, uh, painting a little bit of black paint on it will work, or some rub and buff would work as well. Um, so I got this with two coats all the way around on this little box. It came out really good. I love this color burgundy. This I actually mixed myself with red paint, mixing in a little bit of black paint. So it, it uh, and it was chalk paint. So it mixed in really well and I just love how this color came out. So now I'm just distressing a little bit because it was wood underneath uh, in a stain. I wasn't worried about distressing back and uh, bringing back any of the colors. I thought that would look really well. So after doing that, I of course I had some raw wood there and decided I wanted to go along this box uh, with some black paint. So I just had a little bit on a brush and just going along the edges a little bit and highlighting the edges and making them look distressed. This is gonna be just a little um, primitive 
recipe box, nothing fancy, but I think it speaks volumes on just how simple uh, looking it is. I'm going to try to get back to a more simple look to a lot of the pieces that I work on. I just really like uh, how this primitive look is. And then you can add your color, your greenery, your pit berries, whatever you decide to create something uh, even more interesting. This little mug holder is a dump find. I found this at the free shack at my dump and I knew I didn't want to use it for a mug holder, but I thought maybe it would be great for a riser or a cloche or something like that. And in looking around the next time that I went, I actually found a glass uh, uh, shade that fit on there perfectly or I can make it fit perfectly. Uh, so I decided that I would use that these two pieces together. So they're both a dump find. And we're going to upcycle them, marry them together, and make them look so much better. So of course where the, the hooks were, I had uh, some holes. So I just added some glue and some air dry clay. And also in the middle where um, there was a screw, because it was almost through the other side, I just wanted to add that and maybe have something for the screw to grab onto when I put it back. Now, of course, when I popped the top off, it um, it cracked the bottom, so I had to glue it and leave it overnight so that it would glue up nice and hard. And then I sanded it down the next morning and added my screw and uh, a little bit of glue, and it is holding really well. So now I'm just going to take my uh, homemade burgundy clay based paint and I'm going to paint this little base and I did just one coat on this it covers really well this is just a small little piece and I was going to go back and distress anyway once I got it all painted and with the one coat and then let it dry I sanded it down and gave it a little bit of distress around the edges which came out really really good and then I uh, seal, spray sealed it with my clear Rust-Oleum sealer uh, and I think it came out really nice so far. Here's the little globe that I found at my local dump and I cleaned it up and now I'm going to use some E6000 on the bottom. I'm going to leave a couple little spots that I can add my hot glue so we can get immediate hold so I can finish up this project and we can let it dry later on once it's all done. So I just added the E6000 and hot glue and then put it over the top of this little stand. I really love how these come out and you can do anything inside these little globes. You can dress them up for the holidays, put a little bunny rabbit inside for Easter or a spring. You could add a bottle brush tree and some little snow down at the bottom for Christmas time or a little snowman or something like that. Or you can do what I'm going to do and just add uh, some uh, grubby candle uh, at the bottom of it. But I'm going to add this jute rope around the edging of it to cover up the glue that I'm using to keep it uh, attached to the stand. And I go around two times and I just glue that up really nicely because that's also going to hold that little glass on there as well. So I think uh, it looks really good. But I'm also going to use some black and tan uh, material and make just a little tie on the front of it so you're not going to see the jute rope as much you will still but not as much so I think that kind of came out really cute and then here is the finished product
picked up this little faux cabinet light from my local dump. It was on the shelf in the free shack and I noticed that the top was broken but I figured I could either rewire it or uh, you know buy a new top and rewire it or put a new candle in it. So um, in looking at it I decided that I was just going to put a new uh, light in it and I had some little clip-on lights that I'll show you later on what they look like but I'm going to use one of those in here but this whole thing challenged me through this whole project uh, it didn't the metal pipe that goes down inside uh, didn't want to come out it didn't want to unscrew and I knew that it could but I just couldn't get it to and I couldn't figure out how to get inside of this to get it out. I wanted it out. I just couldn't figure out how. And I finally took it down and clamped it into my husband's vise on his table. And as you can see, we had a struggle <laughs> with this thing. I shouldn't say we. I had a struggle with this thing. While it was in the clamp, uh, I was using my Sawzall to get that metal pipe off and trying to cut it and when I did I moved the the little box and it the the vice just like busted out the front of it so I was like well that's just great so um, I thought well maybe that's a blessing in disguise we'll just keep going with it and see what we can do I made the hole in the top a little bit bigger for my little clip-on light and um sanded it down, cleaned it up really good because it was very dirty, and then uh, d just proceeded to paint it. I'm going to give it two coats of, we're going to go with a the theme here and just go with burgundy since I already have it out, and my paintbrush is already dirty. I'm just going to go with it. So we're going to do two coats of this burgundy paint. I'm trying to cover up that green color, so it's just going to take two coats for that. And um, that's it actually covered very well over that green once I got both coats on there. Here's the front that popped out of the little cabinet and a piece of wallpaper that I had set aside and it almost fits perfectly onto the little board. So I'm going to cut it down so that it fits to size and then I'm going to take even though it's pre-pasted wallpaper, I'm going to take some Mod Podge. It tends to stick a lot better. And I'm going to add that to the top of my, or the front of my board. And then I'm going to stick the wallpaper border on top of that. So I just glued that on there and while I let that dry a little bit and my little box was dry here, I am adding a little bit of black paint because I can't uh, sand it back because I'll go back to that green color and I don't want that there, you know, showing. So I'm just using black, a little bit of black on a brush and uh, brushing that onto the edges to give it some distress. Now I fit my little box front in there and I got it in and I just used hot glue once I got it set right and it glued right in nicely. It took me a while to get it to sit flat, but I finally got it to work. So this is the clip light that I have. It's got a nice long cord on it and it's got those two metal little wings on it and you stick it down in the hole and it actually uh, sticks right in there. So I wanted to cover up my little hole on there a little bit and add uh, you know, just kind of cover up the clip light some. I could have used um, some moss or some material, but I thought just using this jute rope, since it was already out from a previous project, I thought that I would just use this. And I went around uh, probably three or four times uh, so that it would cover up the clip light. So after this one round I uh, go around and then I'll go ahead and stick the little light in there and then I'll just start going around and I kind of uh, every time I go you know do around the top I will get a little bit closer to the light so that it, it kind of covers it up really well and um, but not too close because I don't want it to touch the bulb and get hot of course it doesn't get super hot but 
I didn't want it to. I did change out the bulb also to a dipped, silicone dipped bulb. I haven't yet. These are the ones that actually come with the clip lights. Um, so I did that and then I had a piece of pitberry garland that I cut off and I just rounded it around, you know, just made a circle out of it, uh, fluffed it up so that it would look nice up around the light. I did spray seal it with some uh, Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer and before I did all this part and it's done. <music> I hope you enjoyed my primitive projects today, my thrift flips and my dump finds. If you want to let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite, if you have one, that would be great. I'd really appreciate it. And also, if you want to check the description and the comments pinned to the top, I will give you a link to my Etsy store and anything that I can find that I've used in, this, uh, in these projects today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and have a great day.